Yeah. Well, hello, recording in progress. Uh, don't quite have a quorum yet, but we'll go and do the stop. Does anybody have Mary Ann's text number? Could we text her? Mary Ann Vega? Yeah, and see if she's coming. This I, mean, is the, I don't know that I do. Well, I don't. Let me see. Geo, voice in the sky. Uh, huh? Can Eva vote? She cannot vote, but a quorum is four, so y'all y'all should have a quorum. Yeah, fine. All right, good. Thank you. I've got her telephone number if you want to call her. Yeah, that out. we didn't hear the voice okay. of the sky said that. Uh, call to order. Uh, we do have a determination of quorum. I must have jumped ahead. Um, public comments. Each person who desires to speak to the board on an item on the agenda shall speak during this section. During this section, public comments may be made regarding agenda items only. Attendees must be physically present in order to address the board. Comments by proxy are not allowed. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. Unused time may not be yielded to other attendees. Do I have any public comments? All right, how about approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, April 9th, 2024. Did everybody get a chance to read them? Does anybody remember April 9th, 2024? He wasn't here. Okay. I can't remember it. Uh, we, uh, we amended Chapter 10 and did some updates to, to the definitions. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. We've got, we, we have a tie. <laughs> we have Pat and Mary. Uh, that motion, Mary seconded. At this time, uh, the chair will invite members of the public to address each item listed in this section. Uh, don't know if we have, I don't think we have any public hearings. Uh, so we're going to move to discussion items. Item number six, discuss the status appointment of an animal advisory board chair and additional members for fiscal year 2024-2025. I have pleased and honored to have been the chair for I don't know how long. I don't really know how long. Um, and I just, I've done this uh, position and I've done it well because of the people on this committee. It was not me. So I want to say a big old thank you. Think about what's going to happen next year, which is our first meeting is going to be, I think, October 8th. Yeah. Uh, we will next have, year. Yeah, next fiscal year. year. Yeah, we will have a new member, I'm sure, and maybe we'll have some more new members. Uh, if you think about membership, we don't have to have them from each ward anymore. We can uh, have them from within 10 miles of the city limits as long as they're approved by the city council. Uh, but it has been my honor to serve, and I'm handing it off after tonight. Voila. <laughs> so who are the members well our members right now and i assume that everybody's going to continue um pat mccall james etchinson lauren spear uh dr mary dodson is our veterinarian board member and marianne vega is our alpine humane society board member and i'm assuming that everybody's going to serve again and eva is our new city council thank representative. You. And this is her first meeting. And yes. I want to thank her for being here. Thank you. Pleased Everybody. you're here. And sorry, we, we used to let the city council members vote, but you keep it straight, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Any other comments on this item? Oh, we also have Nancy Burton. She is scheduled for approval by city council on the board. Wonderful. When it, on the fourth, did you say? Uh, this next meeting, the 16th, she should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you will be, you will be sitting up here with us as of October 8th, 2024. Am I even supposed to be here, Gio? Um, let me take a look. I, 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on the agenda for the 16th to be final, but you don't have to be until then. Okay. Moving to the next discussion item, Gio will let us know on that. If you all have a little color-coded calendar in your packet, and we are the kind of the goldenrod color, 
Uh, our first meeting will be October 8th. Uh, after that, January 14th, April 8th, and July 8th. And that's the four meetings we have. We usually stick to that schedule. Uh, we can call special meetings if we need to. Uh, we usually do not. Uh, but that you can go ahead and put those on your calendar and assume that that is the schedule that we're going to have. Gio, did you have anything to add to the fiscal year meeting schedule? No, I uh, just wanted to kind of put it on y'all's radar. It's going to be this master schedule for every board commission and committee is going to be uh, approved or at least considered by the city council on the 16th. So just wanted to throw it out there. If y'all recommend any changes, we can certainly discuss. Uh, it would be uh, need to be made any changes at the council level since it's already um, being considered and they already have their packets and whatnot. But does that sound okay? I want to stick with that schedule seems to have worked for the last year. Yeah, it worked very well. Uh, as a matter of fact, we talked about not holding this one and then Jennifer got busy. So we're holding this one because, you know, summers are always tough, but we have work to do. We're here. We don't, we're not. Okay, any discussion? Everybody any good with that? Y'all need on that? Gio, did you say something? Is everybody okay with that schedule to remain on that schedule? They're nodding their heads. Okay, great. Okay. All right, moving to the action items. Um, approve a recommendation to the city council to recommend an ordinance amending chapter 10 animals to the Alpine Code of Ordinances amending section 10-8 city sponsored clinics authorized authorized to update who can authorize a city city, come on, city sponsored rabies vaccination registration clinic. And it reads, the animal services supervisor chief of police or city manager and that is the change is authorized to arrange for a city sponsored rabies vaccination registration clinics as deemed necessary and what I, yes i did um i printed out what it actually for some reason it didn't get in it, there yeah but what it actually reads is the chief of police is authorized to arrange for city sponsored rabies vaccination registration clinics as deemed necessary so currently it just says the chief of police Okay, so that's why we're that's why the yeah. So we're adding animal services supervisor and city manager. Anybody want to talk about that? <coughs> I will entertain a motion. We're going to do them one at a time. <laughs> no comments. Anybody want to? When was the last? City sponsored rabies vaccination clinic. The 2010 when I did it, but we haven't had one book since then. Remember, we was that one? city sponsored? That's what I'm asking because I've was, never had a city sponsored one that was <laughs> through my clinic. Oh, yeah. but Jennifer was there doing microchip. Yeah, we were doing registration and city and microchipping, but it was sponsored, but it wasn't a city sponsored, right? And it was done in the county. That's true. My yeah. clinic's in the yeah. county. Then nobody remembers, but we have an opportunity mm -hmm. here. I can tell you when the last one was. It was before 2005. The city sponsored. I would guess because that was done through the Alpine Veterinary Clinic when I worked there. <laughs> and we did one almost every year. Is it some, that, that would have to be something that we need to work with veterinarians to, to do. But obviously, we can't do rabies, so. That's, I guess that's kind of what's... You can have your own type of uh, city-sponsored get-together for microchipping yeah. and registration and so forth like that. I think I, this is specific to rabies. rabies. Yeah, I can tell you that the last, last rabies vaccination clinic that I tried to put together, it flopped big time. Mm -hmm. Well, the one we did was only attended by 50 people. Yeah. You but it, it wasn't worth the, mm -hmm. the time that we spent there. Yeah. I think that's why we haven't I uh -huh. it, but yeah. Well, if we want to have another one, the animal services supervisor, chief of police, or the city manager can do it. Right. Do I hear a motion to accept the change of who can do it? So moved. Pat, and who seconds? I'll second. And Lauren second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Same sign. Okie dokie. Next one. 
Approve a recommendation to the city council to recommend an ordinance amending chapter 10 animals, uh, amending section 1010 wildlife feeding to the definition and objective of wildlife feeding. And in this case, uh, we took out the first paragraph of section 1010, uh, which was redundant. Am I right? I think so. Yeah. I think it was just, I don't think we need that. Yeah. It's just too much. So took out all city limits, feeding resultant, overburdened, abundant, highly concentrated populations of wildlife throughout the city. I think we can all look around and see that. And it's just going to start without that introductory paragraph. It's just going to start feeding a wildlife prohibited exceptions, enforcement, and penalties. And it doesn't say feeling, right? It says feeding. I hope it says feeding. This says feeling. What's this <laughs> feeling? And a and objective of wildlife feeling under B or approve of La almost the last word before oh. cover it's not feeding. No, it's feeling. <laughs> it's feeling. Well, the ordinance doesn't. It depends on how you feel about the feeding. <laughs> I just wanted to fix that before we make a vote. I'm finally no, seeing she's it looking on the very front page. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm just in the ordinance. Like, I'm just hoping that in the ordinance it doesn't say so. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm seeing feeding everywhere. Oh gosh. And okay. Geo is really good for this. Goes to city council. He puts it through his little sieve that catches all the good. Yeah, yeah. Because that's a that's not a misspelling of a word. No, oh, it's a real word. <laughs> Anybody uh, have any uh, feelings about taking out the first two paragraphs? <laughs> <laughs> Move it along. Move it along. Move it along. <laughs> and I will entertain a motion. Motion that it's approved. Is uh, that appropriate saying? Yeah, the motion we're going to take out those two. Okay. You got to move over to page 13 and 34 to see it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay, Lauren moves. Do I hear a second? Second. Mary seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, motion passes. Next one, I'm going back and forth, so I didn't even see people. C, approve a recommendation to amend section 10-11 hunting, providing clarifying language that hunting is prohibited within the city limits of Alpine except for the capture and control of nuisance animals by an authorized government official. And if you will turn to page 16, you can see how we changed that. Uh, section 1011, hunting, no person shall hunt, molest, harm, frighten, tease, shoot, or throw missiles at any animal. <laughs> and then we decided the better language would be hunting of any kind is strictly prohibited within the city limits unless it is for the capture and or control of nuisance animals by an authorized government official. Uh, we're also amending uh, the word his to there, and we're changing all of the any wildlife and eggs and all that to wildlife. And then we do want to add to the definitions that hunting, what hunting is, uh, it's the practice of seeking, pursuing, capturing, or killing wildlife or feral animals. Do gophers go in that category? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you mean, are you hunting those girls? Or yeah. I'm not hunting them. What's well, a nuisance animal? Smoking them out. Yeah. And uh, are they dying afterwards? Never see them. Just see the holes. Okay. I don't think so. Thank you. I think you're acting in your property. You get rid of a nuisance they're animal. They're smart enough that they're just leaving. Yeah. Is there a definition of what is a nuisance animal? It's in there. Do we have exactly what Pat is, is bringing up. Yeah. Sparrow cats could be a nuisance animal. Well, I like that. What is what is a nuisance animal? Are you talking about your neighbor's dog? Uh, or are you talking about the gopher that's digging in your yard? Or, or the squirrel that? that comes up and eats your garden? Or are you talking about the wild pigs? So do we need a definition of nuisance? I think we need a definition of what nuisance animal is because that's... Do we know we don't have one? That's what I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Would it fall under the description of public nuisance in that section? I don't know. I'm not the attorney for that one. Uh, Geo, I don't know if you can quickly look at our ordinance and see if we have a definitions for nuisance animal or public nuisance. Okay, let's see. An ordinance for public nuisance. 
we have an ordinance, but do we have a definition? We don't have a definition. Yeah. So nuisance is defined in the definitions. It is not. It is just it the is. word. What is the definitions for nuisance? Means disturbing the peace, emitting noxious or offensive odors, or otherwise endangering or being offensive to the environment of the city. So that includes a skunk. Yeah, mm. the noxious odor. And then, of course, pet animal is defined, but nothing that says nuisance animal. Under pet animal, a pet animal can be a nuisance. We, so we do have a definition of nuisance, and we do have a definition of an animals. So, what's the definition of animal? The definition of pet animal means dogs, cats, birds, guinea pigs, hamsters, mice, snakes, iguana, and turtles. Pet animal shall also include any domesticated animal that a person owns or that is sold or offered for sale for the purpose of being kept indoors as household pets. Indoors only. Did we just, I thought we, I thought just we put the a definition of animal. Yeah, I thought we had a definition of animals now. Let's see. Uh, animal means any living vertebrate creature except human beings with and with the exclusion of fish, amphibians, reptiles, cage birds, and small rodents when kept as pets in a private residence or enclosed in a commercial enclosure. The word animal shall mean only a mammal when referring specifically to the control of rabies. Yeah, that's what we did. That's we we yeah, that's also in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we changed it to because I remember that we took it, we had it had foul pocket animals, but oh, okay. yeah, we so took we out the pocket animal because okay. we all had to go, what's a pocket animal? So if we have a definition of nuisance and we have a definition of animal, is that going to be enough for the nuisance animals? That would just be a lawyer who would want to get in there. If yeah, anybody, mess around. Yeah. Hunting of any kind is strictly prohibited within the city limits unless it is for the capture or control of nuisance animals by any authorized government official. So nuisance would be noxious, blah, 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 blah. Animal is a living vertebrate. Yep. I mean, I would personally think it would be covered. I don't, I wouldn't see us having any issues with that. What do you think, Jennifer? I agree. I don't think I think you can combine those things. Yeah. Things. So Pat with her gopher and what she's doing mm -hmm. would not be smiled upon because she's not in animal control. But she's not hunting them. She's smoking them. She's smoking them. I, I, I and she doesn't know if and they it got isn't it. working. So why are you, <laughs> you might need to Maybe talk to a government, government official. Do you have a section that's called um, molesting of animals? I don't know if that falls into that category where you're. And you do have the definition yeah. of hunting. Yeah, and that's we're really only looking at hunting here. Yeah. Because um, I can tell you that my husband stands out in the yard and we're out of the city limits, and he's hunting the gopher because he's waiting for it to poke its little head out of there. He can do that because he's outside the city. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you I'm going to move to Albuquerque where I don't <laughs> in the yard. <laughs> Come with me. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if you start shooting at your girlfriend, oh, no. we're going to be in trouble. Well, that's in the city yeah. limits. So, yeah, yeah, she's in trouble twice. And, you know, one of our neighbors used to shoot at the javelina out of his bathroom window. That's terrible. You know, there's. Well, I will admit to putting a water hose in the hole. Yeah, ran it for forty minutes and no, no water anywhere. So who knows where that would run to? <laughs> you just help the water table. <laughs> All right, back on hunting. Or is everybody okay now with the language? Can I entertain a motion? I so move. Okay, Pat moves. Who seconds? Second. All right, Lauren seconds. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Thank you all. We're moving on to number. D, uh, approve a recommendation to city council to amend 10-41 standards to provide for clarification of terms used within this section and to provide a transfer of information contained in this section to other sections better aligned for the information. And this is going to have a lot of line outs and 
look like we're changing the whole world, but we are not. Um, so this is, again, we're using the, we're trying to use the word animals everywhere rather than dogs or cats and that type of thing. So first thing we did was make everything an animal. And then uh, when we went to section 1041A1, we had 150 square feet for each dog six months of age or older or as outlined. And then we refer to the sections where it's outlined. And Jennifer has a little note in here that is not part of the ordinance. Should we add something for chickens or other small animals? Uh, we don't have anything uh, about how chickens or other small animals are contained. We do only have it for 150 square feet. So that might be something we add to a later agenda, Jennifer, you think? We can. Okay. I'm going to, I'll mark it. We can leave it alone. I mean, we've kind of left it as when we do our chicken permits, just as the discretion of the officer, if they go and they, you know, see any that are just, they're all just squeezed into a little thing. Obviously we're going to say, no, that's not enough space. Right. For them. So right. it's just kind of, we don't, we didn't put a square footage on, on a chicken permit. Well, and if you do write an ordinance, then you will not have the discretion of an officer, right. which gives you a little more leeway. I'm always for the discretion of the officer yeah. personally. So I'm okay with leaving it open and keeping it the way it is. I just okay. thought I'd ask the question yeah. to the board if they thought. Anybody have anything to add? Y'all worried about the chickens? Having enough room? Chicken dinner? All right, I'm gonna cross through that that note and say we're, we're fine, we don't think we need to do it. Uh, number three, section 1041A3, design of matter that provides the animal access to the inside of a dog house. We did add the word coop, at least get the coop in there. Uh, a dog house or other building or shelter for an animal must, and again, all these changes are animal, animal, animal. And the last one, dry bedding, or other means of protection from weather that will allow the animal to retain body heat when the weather is colder than what a animal of that breed or species and condition can tolerate. So if you're in Alaska and you got a musk ox, you don't have to have a whole lot of uh, cover for the musk ox because that species doesn't need it. But most of our dogs and cats do. Uh, suitable means for prompt drainage of excess liquid that would cause the doghouse coop building or shelter to flood and then be structurally sound again to protect the animal allows the animal in or out and then once we get to uh 1041 4 yeah 1041 b we're moving all of that to 10-59 no person having charge of custody of an animal shall place or confine an animal or allow an animal to be placed or confined or to remain in a motor vehicle trailer under such conditions for such a period of time as may endanger the health, well-being of such animal due to heat, lack of food, water, or other such circumstances as may be recently expected to cause a suffering disability mm -hmm. death of such animal. 1059 was? Animals and vehicles. Animals I it out. So it just made sense to move that section I got to yeah. animals and vehicles. That makes sense to me. And then C, we're going to move to 10116. Uh, owners of animals shall keep such animals restrained at all times within the city, and animals shall be deemed restrained when it is confined on the premises of the owner with secure within a secure fence or enclosure. Uh, confined by means of collar or harness attached to a chain or similarly device anchored securely to the owner's property so as to keep the animal on the premises out of reach of the public right of way within a vehicle being driven or parked or under the direct physical control of a competent person with a means of a secure leash not over six feet in length. And we, we did change that a couple of sessions ago to meet Texas standards. And 10116 is? 10116 is specifically says restraint of animals and birds. Okay. And finally, uh, we feel like this is a repeat. Uh, the owner should keep a pen or enclosure in such matter as not to give off odors offensive to persons residing in the vicinity or to breed or attract flies, mosquitoes, or other noxious insects, or in any manner to endanger the public health or safety or create a public nuisance. And you felt like that was in 
the news section be, which should be the, the next section. The next section, okay. All right, so that would just, we're eliminating that one. <laughs> then the news section be, the owner of any animal shall keep all pens, enclosure, coops, and shelter structures wherein each such animals or fowl are kept in a clean and sanitary condition so not to give off offensive odors, become a nuisance to person residing in the vicinity. The owner of any animal or fowl shall not allow awful ooh, manu man manner of <laughs> manure, feces, and, or waste material of such animal to accumulate or remain in the pens, enclosure, coop, shelter areas, including pasture, pasture acreage, words, in any matter which is conducive to the breeding or attraction of flies, mosquitoes, and other noxious insects. Uh, and then here we say it cannot become a nu nuisance, and then we take out the maintenance or permitting of the conditions in this section is hereby declared to be a public nuisance. Now, looking at all of that section, do you want to move all of that to 1042? Um, yes, yeah, so 1042 is public nuisance. So you would so say- it made sense to me to move this talking about, let me see. Talking okay. about all the, how you maintain where they are. I think we were just talking about, um, yeah, we're talking about nuisance and B, so- Maybe we don't need B? Well, yeah, or you don't need B. Is it covered enough in 1042? I think all of it, I, I think I labeled all of this as could it possibly go to 1042? Just because it sounds like a public nuisance instead so, of stand. I mean, it is under standards, but standards. Understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's labeled and it's also labeled in public nuisance. Why does it need to be in standards as well? Right. I think is what my thinking was. Well, we can we can either suggest we eliminate this whole section, or we can add, suggest to put it in 1042, and then we can review 1042 and see if we can clarify it. Anybody have a feeling? <laughs> I agree. I don't. I think if it's a public nuisance, it belongs to the public nuisance, and standards are. You know, what is a standard? Requirements for outside animals, confinement requirements. And then that would be it. Standards would be just uh, the confinement mm -hmm. for outdoors. Yeah. And then public nuisance would be public nuisance. So right now, if somebody that wasn't familiar with this looked this up, they would have to look in two places. Here and 1042. Yeah, this well, several of these things that I did move around was is trying to keep things together in, in sections and not all over the place. Because it is also hard for officers yeah. to try and find, well, what section is that in? Because you could pick a qualify under this section or maybe even this section because it's repeating itself or it just it's it not makes sense. it didn't make sense. I say move it then. Okay. Uh, so looking for a motion to make the clarification changes and to move uh, the section B, formerly titled E, all to public nuisance. Do I have a motion for that? I so move. Okay, that moves. Second. Okay. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. It's all to look up. See if anybody has the same sign. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes. So uh -huh. if we're moving that to 1042, that's getting rid of section B. So then we'd have to change our C, D, and E, correct? Is that just a clerical thing that you will? Yeah, Geo will do all that. It, well, actually, to me, it, you're going to stop at I. You're going to have a section A, and that's it. You won't have a B. What about the C that, that talks about the feeding troughs and then the D that's Oh, there's the a feeding trough. Oh, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're so there'll right. there still be a B and a C. Yeah, there will still be a B and a C. But the one you titled E, that would go to 1042. So feed troughs will stay at standards. And I can't say that word putricible material will go to 1042. Is that like a putrid? 
Okay. Well, it's about the feeding trough, isn't it? No putrescible material shall be allowed to accumulate on the premises, and all such material used as feed, which is unconsumed, shall be removed daily and disposed of by burial or other means approved. Should that stay with the feeding trough or go to public nuisance? How's everybody? Your feel? feed can become putrid. Yeah. So therefore, you're saying that um, it becomes a nuisance just because the odor and so forth, the flies that it draws, so forth, the maggots that it it will mm -hmm. have. Um, so are you saying that that is? I mean, I can see where it would be in both, but uh, if you're talking about what is offensive, that would be the putrid nature of those particular materials being piled up, right. which is horse manure that people just throw over in a pile or, you know, cleaning a pen of whatever creature that they've got and just throwing it down a, a certain area of the premise. And that could become a nuisance because of what it would attract and the smell that it would create. Yeah, but we, when we talk about the feed troughs, we're also for the feeding of vegetables, meat, scraps, or garbage be done in containers. But then watering troughs, it says prevent the breeding of flies, mosquitoes, or other insects, the one right of it. I don't know how you split it. I don't know. But how that's you split just it. for standard. Yeah. That's for the care of that particular animal. This other is the disposal of those things that are left in the feed troughs that are no longer consumable. Um, and that start becoming putricible uh, material. Uh, all right. Uh, how do y'all feel? Does everything go to 1042? I'm sorry. That one, the putrid stuff go to That's 1042. Think that it's, I'm, now that I'm looking at it again, it's like, I don't think it necessarily really matters if it goes in Yeah. It could, I mean, it could, it, it could it's, still be a standard. Uh, yeah, I agree. That's why I have the question mark. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't sure. Well, we voted on it do we need to amend anything because we voted on it as it was written without worrying about that i thought this was only that you were talking about you're talking about the whole thing that was moved to yeah i was moving everything other than feed from other thing up to feed troughs and then feed troughs would stay so it would be b that yeah. would be moved b would be moved all of it and then right the new c d and e would stay here Right. That's yeah. how I would read it. Yeah. Other than that, y'all you know, were talking about trying right. to move right. we were e like, over to 1042. Right. Okay, so I think our vote stands. All right. So, wait a minute. I better start marking them so I can keep up with them. Uh, it's 1041. I think that was the most confusing. I think that one, yeah. 1042. Now we're going to look at 1042 because... We just, you know, we didn't know we had it right here with us. Uh, 1042, uh, amending public nuisance designated to provide clarifying language, provide additional circumstances that constitute an animal nuisance and make, make section references to other relevant sections in the chapter. All right, we will be considered a public nuisance. We add howling and cr we're adding crowing. Uh, we put in services, we're, we're calling ourselves animal services. We move, we put animal there. Then on two, uh, the keeping of any animal in such a manner as to endanger the public health or as to disturb neighbors by the accumulation of droppings. And there's that word again, putrescible materials, which cause foul and offensive odors. We wanna clarify that. The keeping of an animal is in such a manner that gives off offensive odors due to the owner not keeping all pens, enclosure, coops, and shelter structures with it, wherein such animals are foul and the clean and sanitary conditions in which becomes a nuisance to persons residing in the vicinity of such pen, enclosure, coop, or shelter. The owner of any animal or fowl allowing awful manure, feces, or waste material to accumulate or remain in the pens, enclosure, coop, or shelter odors, including pasture, in any manner which is conducive to the breeding and attraction of flies, mosquitoes, there's those noxious insects again, or any manner which endangers the public health or safety or which creates an unhealthy environment. Though just more and more and more. Finally, it was like uh, accumulating for such animal or fowl as needed and no less than every 72 hours. So you're saying they need to clean this it. This is the exact incorporation of B. This is B. All right. 
This was well, this we've was, already decided on that. So yeah, we're this good. is the movement of B into the second, All right. I believe. Well, I think you're probably right because I had to say awful. Did you feel like you read that multiple times? I feel like I had to say awful a lot. Yeah, it's it's I pretty sure it is a copy and paste of the it is the alterations okay. of the then we're making sure we're calling manual services office officers and then number four uh all animal pens stables or enclosure which uh, animal may be kept or confined which from use have become offensive Redundant unless we're describing structure, which is touched on in section 2, 1041. So you would eliminate number four. And again, this is 10117. So we're going to eliminate four and five. And then we will say over here on number new four, uh, dog waste shall be immediately removed by placing said matter in a sealable bag or container and thereafter disposing of it in a trash receptacle sanitary disposal unit or other closed or sealed refuge container. Uh, <laughs> the subsection shall not apply to visually impaired persons who have the charge control of use guide dogs. So they don't have to pick up after the guide dog. Okay. That seems really difficult. Yeah. You couldn't see it. Uh, well, th there is no change here other than we said a sealable bag. People are supposed to be picking up after the animals. So, any conversation on 1041? We know we put B over there. We're changing some words, and we want you to seal that darn bag. <laughs> Stay with us, Mary. I'm here. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? Don't keep looking at me. I know. Look at Mary. Mary, you want to make a motion? What's the motion? Uh, to accept 10-41 as written. I make a motion to accept 10-41 as All written. Right. Who's making the second? Second. To just 42. Oh, 1042. God. Whoever that person is that we're supposed to follow his rules. Yeah, Robert? Robert. Yeah. That He's one. a good guy. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Next one is going to be 10-43. We're going right down the line. And? I have 10-94. I have 10-94. So it's it's right now oh, this I is see. under 1043. Yeah. Okay, what we want to do is remove 1043, keeping of swine and relocating the section to a more appropriate portion of the code. We're going to establish 10-94 swine under Divi division two permits. And that's we're just changing 10-43 to 1094. We're referring back to section 1042-2. Any conversation? Accept a motion. I motion that we accept. Second. The exclusion of 1043. The label is 1094. Thank you. Okay. There's a second. Second. All right. All in favor? All right, guys. All opposed, same sign. But we took care of that one quick. All right. Uh, approval recommendation to remove 10-45 standing bulls, stallions, or jacks at stub and relocate the section to a more appropriate portion of the code, section 1095, standing bulls, stallions, or jacks, and put that under division two permits. That's all we're doing, 1045 to 1095. That's our move. Okay, Pat moves, and I hear a second. I second. Lauren seconds, and all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same side. <clears throat> okay, approve a recommendation to remove section 10 44 restrictions on size and location of area for keeping horses and other large animals and relocating that section to a more appropriate portion of the code 10 82 small livestock, animal, and fowl permit requirements. And this does exclude dogs, cats, and household pets. And we got all of that in there. Uh, you're adding a little bit of language, aren't you, from mm -hmm. the 1044? Yeah. So okay. this, yeah, the change is these things are already kind of this this graph is already kind of in there. Yeah. Um, so like just there's actually it's two graphs. There's one that just has the um 
the large animals, and then there's the one that says small animals. Okay. And they're separate, and they're in two different sections. So this is just combining them both into 1082 so that they're, they're not in two different weird places. I see, it, I see. It didn't make any sense to have the small right. animals in 1044 and then the large, large animals separate in, in permits, where, right. where I think right. Any conversation? We and we're not changing the square feet of animals or any of that. That's all remaining the same. Okay. Entertain a motion. I so move. All right. Well, you you get the second on that one. Okay. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Same side. Okay. We're getting there, guys. Stick with us. Dinner is in your future. Um, 10 9 Guide Dogs by updating the title to a more appropriate language. And we're going to call them service animals uh, to better align with federal and state verbiage and, and requirements. So, this one we are, we're taking, you know, we just had one paragraph for guide dogs. And now we're really describing what a service animal is, how a service animal is going to be used. Uh, when it is not obvious what a service animal provides, only limited inquiries are allowed. Uh, staff may ask two questions. Is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? And what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? Staff cannot ask about the person's disability, require medical documentation, require special identification card, or training documentation for the dog, or ask that the dog demonstrate its ability to perform the work or task. Is the staff referred to here an animal control, animal services officer? It can be any staff, staff in a, um, you know, if somebody's bringing it into a, you know, a business or something. Any business. Like Just Okay. I don't know if we need to make that more clear. Yeah. State and local business and nonprofit that serve the public generally must allow service animals to accompany people with disabilities in all areas of the facility. No, I think, I think the first paragraph does talk about it. Has to be under control of the animal. I mean, animal, a handler. Uh, they must be harnessed, leased, or tethered. Uh, and then we want to put under the definition uh, they're def that service animals are defined as dogs that are individually trained to do work. Uh, examples include guiding people who are blind, alerting people who are deaf, pulling a wheelchair, alerting and protecting a person who's having a seizure, reminding a person with mental illness to take prescribed medications, calming a person with PTSD during an anxiety attack or performing other duties. Dogs whose sole function is to provide comfort or emotional support do not qualify as service animals under the ADA. How about that? You mean my emotional support peacock won't make it? So do, if you cannot ask, but only those two questions, how are you identifying that animal and the service animal? Am I missing that part? How is the animal being identified as Well, they must be animal? wearing, they're under the control of the handler. Harness leash, they don't have anything on them. I mean, I see. I, I don't see yeah. anywhere. Ask what work or task they, uh, the dog is trained to perform. But they don't have to have like an identification card no. that they can provide and say that that's all you, all that that staff member of you, whomever you they are to, is to take their word for it. Yeah, you have to. That's just how it is. That's a bunch of bull crap. I know. But because people get away with this. Like, I know well, they do. They take their little animals into um, the sure. grocery stores and so forth, and they're being carted around in the grocery cart. But they're not yeah. walking beside them or alerting uh, if they're about to have a seizure or anything like that. Emotional support animals are covered under the Fair Housing Act, not the ADA. So if you ask them, if they come into your place of business, you say, what work or task is this dog being trained to, it has been trained to perform, and they say it's my emotional support animal. I would kick them out. Then you could kick them out. 
Well, that's what I'm saying is yeah. there, they should have a little card that identifies yeah. the dog as being an emotional support animal or being certified by the ADA. Service. Most of the service animals usually have a real vest on. Yeah. Yeah. Real service. Also. Real service animals. But yeah. we, we don't identify, we don't have here anywhere that that animal has to be wearing some no. sort of identification mm -hmm. that no. is a service dog. And this is, this is following, uh, the federal and state verbiage and requirements. So, I mean. Well, we can't change all of that. No. If this is only for our city and so forth, that's, you can change up some of the verbiage. But yeah. if it's something that is uh, passed through all the ADA verbiage stuff, and that's just what we're. We got to live with it. That we're putting into here, then I guess we can argue till we're blue in the face. Right. And in addition, uh, Fair Housing Act means that if, uh, not part of this, but if you said, this is my emotional support animal, you have to rent an apartment to them. You don't have to. You don't have to. There are some exceptions. Okay. And I, uh, I'm actually going to get the Wesley board to hire an attorney to help us to figure that out. Figure that out. Yeah. Okay. But if they walk in to a place of business and they say it's emotional support, you don't want them in there. You can ask them to leave. Most, if you look, most of the signs say service animals. Right. Like, and emotional support is not a service dog. But service how many dog, people have that knowledge underneath their belt? No, no, no one. It depends who's going to make a scene in the grocery store. There's a dog running loose in the grocery store. Oh, that was no that was EXO. That was EXO. That was that husky dog. He runs loose everywhere, and he's yet to to be stopped. What's going to sooner, sooner or later? He's going to knock an old. That person, you know, he's gonna get hit by they're, they're going to sue, you know, he's gonna be hit. We have that will be Lowe's problem <laughs> after, after the hours and time that the animal control is allowed to do what they're allowed to do, and he's running around. What happens is he's wearing one of my tags, and we get called uh, at home or the of the night. wherever and have to identify who this dog belongs to and try and get a hold of their owners. One was out of town in. Dallas or something like that and um there was a someone else who had to come and get the dog and put the dog back in the yard oh, but I'm waiting for when they get umpteen tickets and they have to respond and be responsible for this dog instead of us getting the dog back to the owner where they don't have any consequences and the dog's going to pay the consequence exactly so I whenever they say you've got a husky Got a little white mark on it it's too. XO. It's XO. Yeah. And he's usually already been posted all over he the internet. It is. I've seen him on Facebook. I'm too fine. But he isn't a service animal, is he? No. no. He's a loose animal. He's just going. He's going. I, I mean, of course, the door opens and all the food is there. Yeah. Well, he was following some kids around. Oh, okay. In in there before somebody stopped him and turned so him over to the management. Because the dog <laughs> lives in the city limits or outside he of the city limits. Lives in the city limits. limits? Is he the owner's been ticketed? And it doesn't matter to some individuals. So no matter how high the fine goes, they just pay it. I, I'd have to go with and talk to the court for that. Okay. So, yeah. But before we go there, he's not he's not a service dog, nor is he yeah. a emotional support dog. He's just doing what Siberian yeah. Husky do. He's just, right. he's just out there being a <laughs> the the big the friendly dog. Several. Any more discussion on the service animals? Can we pass that one? Or do y'all have some issues with it? Would you like? Well, to I mean, we can't change what yeah. is there in whatever law it is. Right. I may not agree with the whole thing, but All right, well, I can't change it. Who would like to make the motion? I'll make the motion. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Who wants to second? I'll second. Okay. And all in favor? I all oppose, same sign. Would you like to oppose? It's not going to do any good. <laughs> well, we'll put you down as opposed. Mary opposed. <laughs> one of the few times that I ever opposed. Yeah, I know anyway. it. I know it. And thank you all very much. We have gotten through the ordinances. And I do notice the next agenda item was to appoint a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. I'm going to respectfully suggest and y'all can disagree with me that we wait until the October when we have a fuller group to do that. Does anybody Geo Voice in the Sky, do you have a problem with that? 
No, that's fine. I just added okay. it in case y'all wanted to proceed. Okay. And you wanted to uh, because I think we'll have you know, more people sitting up here and hopefully between uh, now, July and October, there'll be a full more, few more that will come on this board because we are a great board. I mean, we do things right around here. So just tell your friends. I think actually Judy Stokes wants to get on this board. Um, she was. Yeah, well, no, I meant as a member. She was okay. as the city council rep. So that is all I have. Does anybody, let me see where we are. I better make sure I follow the agenda. Uh, time for board member comments. Anybody have any I comments? I have one, one comment right. just off the cuff because I found out information yesterday, although this involves Martha, but what happens if it comes to Alpine? If you have a um, person who's moving to our area with two pygmy hippos, What's going to happen? I don't see anything in here that refers to a hip. Are they emotional support? Animals? <laughs> <laughs> they can get their house exotic animal because it's not. I have no idea how to consider not that species to the area. It's pick me, pick me hippo. That has got to be Why? classified exactly. as an exotic animal, and it's not allowed. It's in the ordinance. Pick me hippo. exotic animals are not allowed in the city in of Alpine. Pick me hippos. What about like kinkachus and stuff like that? Are they exotic? Yeah. Why would you bring a water? I don't know. Horse I don't know. Like this, but... Well, that explains it. There you go. He he is a well known whoever he is. I just heard it third mouth. Um, in a well known zoologist moving Maybe to Barbara. Barbara. Board comments? That's a good one, Mary. Anybody else have any board comments? I'll, we move to adjourn. So move. So move. I always look at Pat. Pat is my, Pat is I'm Robert. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit over by Jennifer. She's uh, line of sorry. She still looks at me. Well, I still, this is, you know, Jennifer sits in the right place for me. Then I go, blah, 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 blah. And I always look to the left. And I, <laughs> she gives me a nod or she goes, okay. Oh, this is a train to me. Oh, yeah, no idea. Mary it sounds like no. J.J. Arms from Dr. No, this actually was asked to neuter and castrate in alpaca the other day. Oh, for some of that, didn't you? Oh, Sandy, you were. Uh-huh.